Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, EcoPulse rides for the first time ever. Rotor begins production on uncrewed helicopter. Epic E1000GX sees Fiki certification. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. EcoPulse rides for the first time ever. A Dyer TBM equipped with a suite of six electric motors took its first flight, going up for 100 minutes as the crew established function checks of major systems. The EcoPulse sports a hybrid powertrain, taking flight with a combined battery and turbo generator arrangement that provides power to a series of electric motors mounted on each wing's leading edge. To power all those spinning props, the EcoPulse sports an 800-volt battery pack that can deliver up to 350 kilowatts of power and keep them topped off with its turbo generator to ensure the design does not suffer from the usual constraints of an all-battery aircraft. Eric Dalbier, Safran's executive vice president of strategy and chief technology officer, said, quote, We confirmed today that this disruptive propulsion system works in flight, which paves the way for more sustainable aviation. The lessons learned from upcoming flight tests will feed into our technology roadmap and strengthen our position as leader in future all-electric and hybrid electric propulsion systems, end quote. Sabine Klauka, chief technical officer at Airbus, said, quote, This is a major milestone for our industry, and we're proud to have powered the EcoPulse demonstrator first flight with our new battery systems, end quote. High-energy density batteries will be necessary to reduce carbon emissions from aviation, whether for light aircraft, advanced air mobility, or large hybrid electric aircraft. And after these messages, Vans clarifies process for back-ordered kits. SkyLeader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, SkyLeader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. SkyLeader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Vans clarifies process for back-ordered kits. Vans Aircraft has started clarifying that those with deposits on kits, engines, props, and avionics will see rolling updates to their order process as procedures fall into place. The company says, quote, our goal is to start the process of shipping replacement parts to customers this month and to complete the delivery of replacement parts to all impacted customers before the end of 2024. More than 1,800 customers are affected by this issue, some of whom have more than one affected kit. The cost to manufacture and ship replacement parts to customers will be very significant. It will take time to provide replacement parts to all affected customers." End quote. Australian Board Issues Final Report on Crocodile Egg Crash the Australian Transport Safety Bureau released its final report regarding a February 2022 crash involving a Robinson R-44 that killed two. The aircraft was engaged in a most unorthodox mission, being crewed by one pilot with reality TV star Matt Wright hooked into a 100-foot sling line dangling below. Wright, the Outback Wrangler, was along for the ride in an effort to gather and collect crocodile eggs. The incident report is a real eye-opener, with one poor decision after another resulting in an unsurprising but not wholly unexpected end. NASA begins weighing ISS disposal cost. 
The International Space Station's impending disposal could prove quite costly for NASA. The administration began running some figures for the overall cost of decommissioning all 450 tons of the ISS, and the rough figure sits at almost $1 billion. The cost wouldn't have been so bad in previous years if they could make use of Russian assistance and their progress vehicles. Under that older plan, the Russians would provide a series of the spacecraft to be connected to portions of the ISS to provide for a stabilized, controlled deorbit procedure. EVE joins FlexJet for air traffic simulation. EVE Air Mobility announced a collaboration with FlexJet to, quote, advance urban air mobility through innovative software simulation, end quote, having completed an initial test of their traffic management capabilities. London's helicopter market, FlexJet's stomping grounds, will one day be a hive of intense AAM activity in the future, making it a priority for local operators to figure out the traffic tangles far in advance. FlexJet provided its Hilo fleet to perform flights monitored by EVE's urban ATM team, providing a wealth of data from real-world use cases. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Rotor begins production on uncrewed helicopter. Rotor Technology showed off the newest addition to their production line in the form of the R550X, the, quote, largest uncrewed civilian helicopter on the market, end quote. The aircraft is based on the tried-and-true Robinson R-44 Raven II, granting it a 1,200-pound payload thanks to its lack of pilotage. Much like its parent Raven, the R-550X offers three hours of endurance and a top speed of 150 miles per hour, given the right conditions, of course, allowing it to be used as an actual aircraft, not a tiny ISR drone. Rotor says its added software can, quote, prevent common causes of helicopter accidents such as inadvertent entry into instrument meteorological conditions vortex ring state, mast bumping, loss of control, and controlled flight into terrain, end quote. Funny enough, Rotor is galloping along at full speed on the R550X, launching it straight to production as soon as it's announced. That process works here because the R550X isn't a traditional crewed aircraft. The experimental category Hilo isn't designed to carry people, allowing Rotor to, quote, leverage existing FAA rules and regulations to fly the R550X in agricultural firefighting, inspection, and maritime operations, end quote. And after these messages, Epic E1000GX sees Fiki certification. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John K. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Epic E1000GX sees Fiki certification. Epic Aircraft's E1000GX turboprop gained FAA certification for flight into known icing, improving livability and safety for operators in an even greater number of missions. Epic CEO Doug King says the certification was a long time coming. He said it was, quote, one of the most challenging, end quote, that the company had faced during E1000 development. The first test flight used a set of artificial 3D-printed ice chunks affixed to an E-1000 testbed, with more than 450 flight hours spent across a trio of similar aircraft. The faux ice gave way to real-world conditions later in the process, in addition to wind tunnels, as they examined a variety of failure modes and error states. All in all, the ice testing saw 18 different icing configurations applied to the E-1000GX, totaling up to more than 280 hours of wind tunnel testing. The E-1000GX's de-icing suite includes an optical ice detector, de-ice boots on the wings, horizontal stabilizer leading edges, engine inlet, in addition to bleed air heated windshield and electrically heated propeller, air data probes, and AOA sensors. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Air on News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.